everybody, I'm Gina Perks, and we are here in month one. So we're ready to start our projects. Grab an adult beverage, grab your best friend, and let's have some fun together. I'm here working in the comfort of my own home, my studio, so I want you to just relax, put on some music, have a great time, and just get ready to learn. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is our fabrics and our preparation process. So when you're selecting fabrics for this project, you want to think about something that's really going to highlight and showcase the quilting. So this is an example of a fabric that is best suited for your backing. This is wonderful for concealing any mistakes, any tension issues, things like that that you may or may not have. Backing fabric, good choice. For the top, however, we're going to want to use something that's going to read more as a solid. So here I've got a real true solid. So this is just a color. Um, choose something that you like. This is a project that you're going to be working with for our 10 month project. So choose something that you're going to be happy to live with. Nice solid turquoise. What I'm using for my project is an ombre fabric. So you can see here in the background that the ombre fabric is gonna transition from dark to light and then back to dark again. So that's just something um, very modern and that's what I chose to use. So for the dark fabrics, I'm gonna talk about marking a little bit here because that's gonna be the first part of the process. We wanna really prepare our quilt top by marking the foundational marking diagram. So you're gonna first and foremost want to print out your foundational marking diagram, which looks like this. And this is something that you're gonna to wanna to keep handy, keep nearby, so that you can refer to it when you begin marking your project. All right, here are some marking pens that I really like to use. This is a Bowen, and it's a ceramic lead so it has an eraser on the back. It'll stay on for a long time and keep the length of the um, project going. So you can see here I've marked a line and just to kind of test to see how easy it transfers onto the fabric, go ahead and uh, do a little sample to see if you like how it's transferring. The blue water soluble pen is a really good choice if you're using light colored fabrics. So if I were to choose something like this, that's a lighter color, then I'm gonna wanna choose something that's gonna show up a little bit better. Think about the removal process. Anytime you're thinking about the choice of marking implement, do you need to wet it to remove it? Is it going to erase with air? If so, probably not a good choice, the air soluble is not gonna be appropriate for this project. Now, water soluble, you can use as long as you're okay with wetting your quilt, wetting your project. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the rulers that we're gonna be using for the marking process. Use whatever you have handy. For this project, if you're using a long arm, that's fine. If you're using a domestic machine, again, perfectly fine. You can use whichever machine you're comfortable with. If you choose to mark your project once it's loaded onto a long arm machine, you might choose something flexible like this. Okay, if you're wanting to mark everything ahead of time, then you might choose something a little bit closer to this. I like this type of ruler because it's got a nice little um, kind of sticky bottom so that it's not going to um, slide across the surface of the quilt. So this is a good choice as well. And when you're marking, referring to the diagram as often as you can, you're gonna wanna think about your technique. So as you're marking your quilt, pay attention to your angles here, and then make sure that everything stays nice and straight. And as you're marking, along the edge of your ruler, you wanna make sure that you have a wide hand stance on the ruler so that the pen or pencil doesn't push the ruler to the side and cause it to shift. So uh, be, be pretty thorough in this step. Now, if you've opted to use the stencils, 
I'm gonna show you a few things about using stencils. So if you're using a dark fabric, the white iron off is really good. Uh, it also washes away, so you don't have to iron your project. You can either wash it or iron it to remove the markings. So the white's a really good choice. If you're using something that you need a little bit more color, the blue is a good option. It does kind of bounce away a little bit, so be careful. Uh, you might even choose to kind of combine both powders so that you have a little bit of tinting happening there. And then also practice good technique when you're using the stencil. So you can look, you can see through the dots and the cuts of the stencil so that you can mark your grids, your block designs. And again, you don't have to use the stencils, but it makes your life a lot easier and it makes this part of the process more, um, it's just more accurate and a lot quicker. So here's how we're going to mark with the stencil. Again, wide hand stance on the stencil and it's more of just a kind of sweeping motion with the chalk pounce pad. So I'm just gonna press down and kind of sweep across. And then we've got nice visible targets to follow for the ruler part. All right, enough about marking. Let's get to what we really want to do, which is quilt with rulers. The first ruler that we're gonna be using is the Shirley. So Shirley is a really cool ruler because it's got a neat little angle here to follow. So we're gonna have a lot of fun working with this. Um, machine, any machine will work, as long as you have the right foot. So let me show you what I'm using. I'm gonna be using the Bernina 72 ruler foot. So this is a really neat foot, it's a brand new foot. And what you wanna really think about, and if you wanna test, you're just going to make sure that the edge of the ruler doesn't pop up over the foot. So test your foot to make sure that it's thick enough. And then you'll be good to go. Now everything we're doing here is gonna be free motion. So make sure that you lower your feed dog so that you're able to move the quilt freely underneath the needle. Uh, think about your height, your body position. You don't want to be to where you look like a bird ready to take flight. So your elbows should never be up high like this. You want to look very natural. Your shoulders should be relaxed. And that can happen by the height that you position your seat. So this is a pretty good height for me. I like to use my hydraulics to lower and change my body position so that I'm at the right height for the process it should always be very relaxed. The adult beverage will help with that if you need to relax a little bit. Sometimes when we're learning new techniques, we get a little bit scared. So don't um, get too tense with your muscles. You wanna be able to do this all day long. And have your feed dogs lowered. Um, gloves are helpful, which you'll see as I start quilting. The gloves will help to grip the ruler as we slide across. Um, stitch length. You regulate your own stitch length with this project. So with this technique, unless you're using a long arm with a stitch regulator, you're in charge of making sure your stitches look good. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the quilting. So we need some gripping aids. We need to have a thread color that we like, one that will show up. I'm using Glide 40 weight polyester thread which will show up really nicely on my dark background. The gripping aids, these are very, very easy to come by. They're just little pieces of shelf liner. Nothing fancy here, folks. I keep them detached from my ruler and you'll see how I'm gonna use those to uh, get closer to where I want my control to be. So see how this is going to let the quilt glide underneath the needle so that we can get our stitching, get it going. All right, let's start stitching everybody. All right, so once you've finished marking your fabric, 
It's now time to sandwich your three layers. So you're gonna choose a batting. I've chosen a wool batting because it provides a really great loft and it doesn't retain creases for folding and, and it hangs really well. So I've sandwiched the three layers using a basting spray. I prefer basting spray over um, safety pins because the safety pins sometimes get in the way of the ruler. So pay attention to the size that you choose when you're creating your backing fabric in your batting. You definitely want to have about four to five inches bigger with your backing and your batting because as we progress through the technique you're going to see that I'm going to rely on having that extra fabric there for my ruler. So I'm going to need that to push the fabric around. Now, once we've got the three layers uh, secured together, it's time to stabilize our entire quilt. So what that means is everywhere we have a straight line or a square, a corner, a triangle, we're gonna want to quilt those three layers together. That stabilizes the three pieces so that we don't end up with puckers or shifting. Uh, it just holds the layers together really well. And this ruler, you're gonna just fall in love with it because it has that wonderful corner for you. So next, I'm gonna show you how to use it to quilt the corners. So we're ready to start quilting. You should be gloved up. The gloves are gonna help you to grip that ruler a little bit. You should have a base attached to your machine or have your machine mounted into a cabinet where you're gonna have a nice stable platform. That's gonna help you to guide your ruler. If you're not using some type of a base, then the ruler's just gonna kinda tip off the edge. So make sure you have your machine set up right. Make sure that you have your feed dogs lowered. If you're not in free motion mode, you will not be able to do this technique. So lower the feed dogs. If you're using an old machine where that's not a possibility, you can always cover the feed dogs. So you should always be able to get your machine into that free motion quilting mode. Remember, if your stitches look big, it's not your machine, it's you. You're moving too fast. If your machine is um, going really, really fast, so that's you, pushing down on the foot pedal too much, then your, your stitches will be really small. So again, your machine is beautiful. Make sure you give it a kiss before you get started and tell her she's wonderful so that she'll behave for you. And above all, have fun. Here we go. So I'm going to try to manage the bulk of the quilt by rolling it up like so. Um, there's a lot of different techniques out there and it wouldn't hurt to do a little bit of research to see what other quilter friends are doing to manage the bulk of the quilt. Now think about where you're starting and position your gripping aids like so, so that your gripping aids are going to push the quilt through. Now, because you're in free motion mode, you still want to remember to pull your, your bobbin thread up to the top and lower your foot. So pressure button and lower your foot. And then your next step is to bring the bobbin thread up to the top by lowering the needle and then raising it again. And that will allow you to grab a hold of that bobbin thread. You wanna keep the bottom of your quilt nice and clean, nice and tidy, so that you don't have threads underneath. Now once you've got both threads, you're gonna take a little locking stitch. So just a few small stitches, and I'm moving the quilt just slightly, just to secure those threads. The less bulk you have, the easier this technique will be. So keep things up, keep them rolled, all right, here we go. So with ruler work, you're gonna wanna keep a nice wide hand stance on the ruler. So I'm gonna support it. The little ovals are not outlets to plug your fingers into, but rather a ledge. So the ledge is gonna be what your fingers are gonna push against. And there's a distance of a quarter of an inch from the edge of the ruler foot to the needle. So that's gonna be when you're creating a line with your stitching, you're gonna wanna hold the ruler so that it's parallel to the line you wanna stitch and a quarter of an inch away. So here we go. 
Just start stitching. And you can speed up as you feel that you have more confidence. And if your stitches are looking a little bit small, you're gonna wanna speed up. Remember to keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. And also remember to keep practice sandwiches nearby so that you're always practicing ahead of time on a practice piece. So that way when you get to working on your actual quilt top, you will have practiced with that ruler a little bit and you can just keep moving the ruler and repositioning it like so, so that you've got it positioned right in the corner and then if you need to adjust your height, you can lower yourself so that you can see better. You wanna make sure that the technique is working with your visual needs. And then we just glide it right on through. And you can see that I'm working quite slowly until I kinda of get the hang of it. I wanna stay in control. If you feel like you need to speed up a little bit because your stitches are a little bit too big, then just slide your controller so that you can speed up. Now when I get to a corner, I'm going to actually kind of hesitate a little bit so that my corner has a small stitch that's going to appear sharper. And now we're going to take the weight from this edge and lean on this next edge as we work through this corner. We're going to do this with all all of the corners, all of the blocks, all of the triangles. Everywhere we have a straight line, we're gonna use this ruler to stabilize our quilt. Now that we've stabilized our quilt, we're gonna get into our block design. So that's gonna give us more of the detail work. The stabilization process should have given you more confidence, more experience, and you should be seeing that your stitch length is more consistent and that you're feeling more comfortable um, using a ruler in your quilting. So next we're going to want to make sure that we've uh, referred to the appropriate diagrams. We're going to be starting on block number five and we should have marked our numerical sequencing and most importantly we'll want to have marked our starting point so we know where we're beginning. All right there's our starting point so let's go ahead and get to that starting point that we've marked. Bring our bobbin thread up to the top, needle down, needle up. This keeps everything nice on the back. Needle goes back down, foot goes back down. Don't forget to keep your foot down. Take a few locking stitches like so. And then position your ruler so that you're all set up when you reach your corner here to shift your weight along the next side. I find it most helpful to hold the ruler in the front of the foot like so. Remember to kind of eyeball that one quarter of an inch, keeping your ruler parallel to the line that you've marked. And then remember, you're not gonna be perfect at first when it comes to regulating your stitch length, so don't don't stress over it. This is a learning project. Okay, once we reach our corner, then we're gonna go ahead and rotate the Shirley ruler, like so. Reposition the gripping aids. Now you could opt to attach your gripping aids permanently. I don't because I like to be able to move them around if I feel that I'm needing a little bit more grip. Here you can see I lined up my Shirley ruler parallel to the box that I'm creating and a quarter of an inch away. And now I'm going to turn and create this line. Now what you wanna remember is focus on how cool this is that we're not having to rotate our quilt at all. We're simply changing the direction we're stitching and rotating the ruler around. All right. Now we've created the inner box, and this is a design that you can create in one consistent stitch. So we don't, we shouldn't have to stop and cut our threads at all. It's just a matter of rotating the ruler and heading in the right path. Nice wide hand stance on the ruler. 
you'll feel your foot hit the corner because it will stop. And then you simply head the other direction, aiming for the targets. Okay, so as we get to the point there, we want to make sure that we're landing with the needle in the down position. Um, always have your machine set up with the needle landing in the down position, and that way your needle will hold your space for you as you go to rotate that ruler. So now we're going to rotate the ruler and we're off and running for the rest of this block. Also reposition your gripping aids as needed. If you feel like you're not getting a good um, stable hold, then you'll want to just reposition. You'll feel yourself hit the corner and then you're just going to shift your weight. Once you hit the corner, shift your weight and head this way. Think of the time you're saving doing your quilting this way with your ruler. Go ahead and hit your target. Ta -da. Now, this is where it gets important to think about the direction that you're heading for this design. So I'm gonna wanna create the Ohio star pattern before finishing this square. So what I'm gonna do is just continue on this path, like so, until I hit the target. There we go, right there at the target. And then I'm gonna bring the ruler in and make it work for me. So where I have this nice little corner going on, I'm just gonna position the ruler just so, so that when I hit the corner, I'll be ready to just start heading down. I'm gonna head this way. and see how I pause when I need to kind of regroup. Alrighty, now we're gonna come up this way and then back down the other way, positioning the ruler just where we want it so that we're parallel to the line that we plan to quilt. If we need to reposition, go ahead and reposition. You'll feel the ruler hit when you get into the corner and then Go the other direction. Hit your target. Reposition your ruler, like so. Bend down a little bit so that you can see that your ruler is parallel to the line that you plan to quilt. And then you work the other direction. You should be really gaining some control here as you work through this block. you'll start to feel a little bit of a rhythm develop and that's going to help you to understand what the right speed is going to be for your, for your quilting. You can use this hand on the quilt a little bit if you need to push the quilt through a little bit better. Don't forget to reposition your gripping aids as needed. Remember to keep those shoulders nice and loose. Okay, so you're just gonna continue working through until your block is complete. And the end result should be an Ohio Star look. Uh, so we're gonna be finishing block five, and then we're gonna move on to block six. As you're working in block six, you're gonna wanna first and foremost print out the block diagram so that you can mark your block clearly, so that you have a very good idea of where you're heading. You wanna have that numerical sequencing in place and know where your starting point's gonna be. So you're gonna to want to now move your fabric and head to block six and begin work on the dot to dot block. This is probably the most complicated block that we're gonna do. So it's really important that you have that numerical sequencing marked ahead of time so that you simply hit your targets. I'm just gonna identify where my first target is and I've marked number one. Once it's all marked, and you'll just do that by referring to the diagram, then it's a very easy process. You just really wanna make sure that you know where you're headed. Next, now that I've hit my dot one, think of this as a dot to dot. 
Next, I'm gonna hit dot two. Reposition the ruler so that it's parallel to the line. I added a little line there just to indicate that diagonal that goes in between the squares. There we go, we hit dot two. This is a good time to go ahead and trim those threads, get those out of the way. All right, now we're gonna keep working in our dot to dot fashion, hitting the target. So just each time you hit a target, look for the next target, reposition your ruler if need be, and then head to the next dot. Take your time, we're not in a race. Stop when you need to reposition, check your angles. The nice thing about this ruler is it does have grid marked on the actual acrylic so that you can keep your angles nice and consistent. Hitting your dots. Another thing to remember is that the grid is temporary. So if you don't hit your dot exactly where you need to be, the grid will go away and nobody will have to know, which is awesome. So in my opinion, perfection can be quite boring. So don't feel bad if you're not hitting every target perfectly. And remember to kind of step away a little bit. I know sometimes we get too close to our work and we tend to be over critical. So don't do that. Make sure that you are not expecting perfection here and finish up that dot to dot block the best you can. And once you're done, we're ready to move from block six to section 2C. And what's cool about this one is we're gonna get to use the wavy edge of the Shirley ruler. We're gonna add some wavy lines now. And we're gonna use a grid to keep the placement even of the lines. So this is really a fun way to use a grid. You can see the stitch line that you've already completed and also the etch line on the ruler. Now this is the etch line that we're gonna be paying attention to. We're gonna go ahead and put our needle in the down position at the corner, and then just let that ruler rest right up against the ruler foot. Once you've got it kind of placed where you want it, go ahead and add gripping aids. And then just make sure that you're lined up really well. Again, use a nice wide hand stance on the ruler and then use this hand to help guide the fabric through. Now when you have that line matched up correctly, when you hit the dip of your wavy line, it should be right along the edge that you've already quilted. Take your time. Make adjustments as needed. Remember, having drag of your quilt, that's the enemy. So you want to make sure that you're minimizing the drag. Go ahead and reposition your ruler. If you need to, just let it um, follow along the bumps. once you've completed your edge there. You can either follow along your seam line here to get to that new starting point, or you can do a few locking stitches. I typically just do about two or three small stitches in place, and that I find will secure my threads just fine, especially for a quilt like this. This is not a utility quilt, this is more of a wall quilt, so something that's just gonna be decorative and hang on the wall, so I'm not gonna be washing it so just those two or three stitches are gonna lock it in place just fine. And that way you can just trim your threads and head on up to do the next row. The grid lines up again, as well as your etch lines here, so that those are going to keep you in the correct place. Have some fun with this. If you decide that you want your wavy lines to be offset, go ahead and do it. You're the, you're the boss here. This is your quilt, and you want it to be the way you like it. Alrighty, so here we go for the next row. All 
and you just keep on working in that fashion until those sections are complete. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to some border technique. So we're going to travel from section 2C to 2B. Alrighty, we're going to do a piano key border and this is a really cool way to do a piano key border. I think you're going to really like it. You're going to start off the edge of the quilt. So this is the edge of my quilt and this is where we want to stress the importance of having extra fabric here below your quilt. That way your ruler has something to grip and something to rest on. So check to see that you're parallel to the stitching line with your ruler and you're going to stitch that straight line with the grid you marked. Now this is getting fun because we're going to get to use the other edge of the ruler now. So once we get to the end of the line, we're going to take and just turn the ruler and travel back out. Now you can see the little reference etchings on this ruler and that is what you're going to align to the straight edge that you already quilted. And now I'm going to get a little curvy with it and then by keeping those lines matched up, you're going to have the valley of your wavy line perfectly aligned to your stitch line. Now once you finish one line, you're just simply going to raise up your needle, raise up your foot, and move over to the next line. And let's do the next line. So now we turn the ruler using the straight edge of the ruler, like so. Put your gripping aid where it needs to be. Use this hand to press your fabric. So this is really cool because you don't have to backtrack. If you've ever done piano key borders, you've probably experienced some stitch building up from backtracking. I hope that you enjoyed working through that piano key border and that it really helped you to improve and learn more and more about how to use rulers. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go through the diagram and look to see that you've hit all of the sections that we didn't cover in the tutorial so that you're all ready to go for the next month. <music>